and welcome back to uh, lecture 14. I've actually divided today's lecture into 13, uh, three parts, so this will be the last part for today's lecture. Now, what we want to talk about in this last part is just quickly run over what some of the things that you can find in section 2.4. So basically what we're going to talk about is partition matrices. And in fact, we've seen this sort of thing before in a, in a special case. So recall that if we have a, an M by N matrix, we're no longer uh, worried about whether it's square or not, we can write A as A is equal to A1, A2, up to AN, where each AI is a column vector. Now there's a different way of thinking about this, namely that each of these AIs are also matrices, right? So each AI is also an M by one matrix. So what we're doing is we're carving up our original matrix A into a bunch of smaller matrices that sit inside of it. Now there's nothing special about taking all M by one matrices, carving up your matrix in this way. We could do other partitions. For example, here is a, a larger matrix. We have a four by five matrix, and there's no reason why I can't divide it, say, along this way and along this way. I broke it up into kind of four quarters. And now what I can do is I can say that, write my matrix A as a bunch of blocks. So we have A11, A12, A12, and A22, right? So where each AIJ is a matrix or sometimes called a block, right? Where in our particular case, we have A11 is going to be everything in this upper right hand corner, right? So we have one five uh, negative, uh, sorry, upper left hand corner, one five negative two, six, seven, 11, and so on. So A12 would be this matrix, A21 is going to be this matrix, and A22 will be this matrix in the bottom right-hand corner. So you can do this in general, right? There's nothing special about the way that I carved it up. So in general, you can partition a matrix in, into any size blocks, and depending upon your particular uh, problem, there may be a good reason for doing this. So there's just kind of some simple rules that you have to pay attention to. So you can have your, your big matrix, and you have A11, A12, and so on. So all of these capital letters now represent matrices of different sizes. And there are some restrictions about what we can have here. So A, M, 2. Oops, I don't know why that came in there. Let's get rid of that. There we go. A, M, N. And we, the requirement is that in, once you fix a row, each matrix in that row has the same number of rows. Okay, so each matrix... has the same number of rows. So for example, up here, I have A11, A12. They're in the first row of my block matrix, and both of these matrix have two rows, and both of these matrix here have two rows. And then we need something similar for the columns, right? That each matrix has the same number of columns. So for example, A11 and A21, they're in a column in our block matrix, and that's because they all, they both have three columns in the original matrix. And these guys both have two columns. So we can do this. We can take any matrix and just kind of carve it up into blocks. And sometimes it, it's just a more compact way of storing the information, or it allows you to kind of take a bunch of smaller matrices and assemble them into a large, uh, large matrix. And once you've done this, put them into a block form, you can actually do some basic operations on them, like addition and scalar multiplication. So let me be a little bit clearer about when and when you can't do this. So if A and B are partitioned the same way,
So they're partitioned in the same way. A plus B is the matrix corresponding to the sum of blocks. Okay, so let's make this a little bit more clear, maybe with a better uh, kind of picture. Say we have A plus B, and my matrix A is partitioned as A11, A12, up to A1M, and I have A, oh, that should be an N, excuse me, we'll take that as an N, and this is AM1, AMN, and I take a matrix B that's partitioned the same way. So that means the A11 over here and the B11 over here have the same size. They're both matrices of the same size. And let's fill in the bottom down here. And what you get is what you would expect is you take the two matrices and then you add them together. And because they all have the same size, this matrix uh, um, definition makes sense. So we have AM1 plus BM1, and then we have A1N plus B1N, and AMN plus BMN. And then scalar multiplication works in the same way. I didn't leave myself enough room uh, to do that, but maybe I can squeeze it over here. If I do C times A, what you're doing is you're just multiplying each block by your constant. C. Okay, just as one might expect. Okay. And we can kind of do something similar for matrix multiplication. Namely, partition matrices can be multiplied by using the usual row and column rules, provided the partitions are co-formable. Co-formable, And there's an in, probably a new word for you. And what it means in this case here, i.e. that the column partition Of the of A's matrices um, line up with the row partition of B. Now this maybe is a little vague here, so let me make it a little bit clearer what I mean. Let's say I take my matrix A to be this matrix right here. So it's going to be a five, uh, three by five matrix. One, two, three, four, five, one, zero, one, zero, one, and zero, one, zero, one, zero. And I'm going to partition it like this. And I can rewrite it in terms of its blocks. A11, A12, A21, A22. And let's say I take my matrix B here to be a five by two matrix. So we have one, zero, zero, one, two, zero, three, one, four, two. And I'll partition it right along here. So I can rewrite this as, oh, I should still use green. Let's do that. Partition it as B11, B21. And what we need in order for this to work is we need, in order for A times B to be work, the number of rows, uh, sorry, the number of columns of this matrix has to equal the number of rows of this matrix. And the number of columns of this matrix has to equal the number of rows in this matrix. So basically you want it, everything to be defined, right? So let me make it clearer here. And so the, the number of columns of A11 
should be equal to the number of rows of B11 and so on in, in terms just to make sure that all the multiplications are defined. Right, so in, in more generally then, what the pattern would be is that A times B would just be A11, B11 plus A12 plus B21, and then we would have A21, B11 plus A22, B21. Okay. So we do we would think of these as kind of using the regular rules of matrix multiplication, but we need to just make sure that the number of columns is equal to the number of rows here, the number of columns of this guy equals the number of rows here, and so on. So that, that's really what coformable works uh, means. And then you could actually work it out, and I'll, I'll let you uh, I'll let you do, work it all out so you can convince yourself that this works, that this is equal to 3911 seven, one, three, two, and this is the blocks. Because what you're having here, oops, uh, get rid of that. What you're having here is you have to do a bunch of matrix multiplications and additions, and this is the matrix you should end up with. So that's really kind of all I wanted to say about partition matrices. And the last thing I'll just mention here, and I'll go over to uh, Octave, it's probably gone to, uh, gone to sleep, but you can actually define uh, partition matrices as well. So what you can do is you first define your matrix. So here would be my first matrix, A1. Then I'll define my second matrix, A2. Then I'll define my third matrix. And then I'll define my fourth matrix. And I have these four matrices. And what I can do now is I can join them together uh, into make one giant matrix. We'll call it A, where in the first row, I'm going to put the, uh, the matrix A1 beside the matrix A2. So I'm going to put these two side by side. And then in the row below it, I want to first put this matrix and then this matrix. And there we go. That gives us the output. So let me just write that out so that, it, that it's in your notes about the octave command. So suppose that A1, A2, a3 and A4 are matrices that have been inputted, just as we did in my example. And then you can input the matrix A, just as you would have done normally, where, but instead of putting in the entries of the matrices, you're putting in the, the matrices as entries in the matrix. So you would have A is equal to A1, A2, and then in the next row, we want A3, A4. Okay, so that would be as an example. So there was a bunch of things that we learned today. Okay, there's a bunch of key ideas. We learned some more about the properties of the inverses, and particularly we learned about triangular matrices. We learned about invertible linear transformations and their connections to invertible matrices. And we also spent a very brief overview, uh, spent a brief time going over partition, the partition of matrices. Now I'm not exactly sure when you guys, when you're listening to this or watching this. But according to our schedule, this would actually be the last lecture before the fall break. Uh, so just let me add here, if you're on schedule, have a good fall break. I should mention that as I record this, it's just a couple days before Canada today, so I'm also going to go on a break. But hopefully, regardless of when you listen to this, things are going well and uh, you're enjoying the course so, so far. Feel free to email myself or Will if you have any questions and we'd be more than happy to help you. Okay, I will see you in lecture 15.